Welcome back to Intro to Physical Anthropology. I'm your instructor, David Leitner, and today we're going to talk about Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis. Um, this is the first of our early hom uh, uh, hominem members of the genus Homo. Uh, this is where things really start uh, getting exciting. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so Homo habilis is a small-bodied hominin, uh, a fully bipedal anatomy, uh, and uh, in many ways resembles Australopithecines. However, there are several significant differences in their, um, particularly in the cranium. Uh, first of all, cranial capacities. Whereas Australopiths kind of max out around 500 cc's, Homo begins at around 500 cc's and goes upwards of 775, 800 cc's. Um, that means the smallest is two-thirds the size of the largest uh, cranial capacity. So that's quite a bit of range, but uh, it's significantly larger than uh, the Australopiths. So we've already got some interesting stuff happening there. Now, uh, there are some questions about that difference. Is it normal variation in the population? Because remember, we're looking at, you know, a million years or so here of evolution. Uh, or is brain size being selected for over time? Uh, older fossils tend to have smaller crania and possibly longer forelimbs, so maybe that is what we're looking at, this sort of refinement into what the genus Homo is going to look like. Now, splitters say, actually, we're looking at more than one species here. You've got small brain specimens that are Homo habilis, like uh, OH7, uh, which I don't actually have listed here, um, but... Uh, would include uh, KNMER 1813, which you see on the bottom, which is about 510 cc's, um, and OH24, which is below 600 cc's, uh, and the larger brained ones would be uh, um, Rudolf Fences, and that's represented by the KNMER 1470 specimen that you can see here. Again, between 750 and 800 cc's. So uh, it's quite a range, uh, and there may be some correlation with time, but we're still dealing with a relatively few number of skulls, so it's hard to make that determination definitively, uh, let alone saying that these are separate species. It's not to say that the splitters are wrong, it's just... it it would hard, be hard to make a conclusive decision on that, I think, from what data we have at the moment. Lumpers, on the other hand, look at these differences and say, you know, although we can't definitively sex these skeletons, sexual dimorphism might account for some of these size differences, why there seem to be some smaller ones and some larger ones. Uh, others say that actually the smaller ones shouldn't be genus homo at all. They're actually um, these intermediary australopithecines. Um, so, you know, there, as always, there's a lot of debate around the edges of these categories, uh, which is normal and healthy in science as long as there's not a ton of data that sways you in one direction or the other. Uh, these are important, important disagreements to have. Um, that's all I'm going to talk about for now with Homo habilis. A lot of the other stuff, the behavioral stuff, we're going to talk about separately as we talk about stone tools, scavenging, and that sort of thing. Uh, but for now, that's really the, the species as a whole is sort of mostly characterized, like I said, by being a small-bodied member of the genus Homo and having, although small brains for genus Homo, they have relatively large brains compared to Australopithecines. Um, so with that said, thank you again, and uh, take care of yourself, and uh, I will see you soon.